Hi, my name is Carol Beth Anderson, and I'm glad that you've decided to use my book sales and royalties spreadsheet. This tutorial will help you learn how to use it month to month so that you can track your sales all year long. Let me tell you the ways that I sell books. I sell through my website and in person, and I purchase those books through Ingram Spark. I sell audiobooks, and my audiobooks at this point are exclusive with ACX, which means they're sold on Amazon, Audible, and iBooks. I sell ebooks through Amazon exclusively through KDP. I'm in KU, so um, uh, I do Kindle Unlimited. I sell KDP paperbacks and Ingram Spark paperbacks. If you sell in any or all of these categories and you don't sell in any other categories besides these, this spreadsheet will probably work really great for you. If you sell in other categories besides these, for instance, if your ebooks are wide, if you're selling them in Kobo and iBooks and all those places, this might not be the best spreadsheet for you. First thing you want to do with the spreadsheet is save it. You want to save it twice. First of all, save a blank copy that you are going to keep blank so that next year when you need to start the spreadsheet over, you don't have to delete all the data that you entered in a new copy. Just save a blank copy. I'm going to push cancel, but you would, you would push save. And then you're going to save a copy for this year. So you might name that book sales 2019. And then you would click save. Okay, you've got your spreadsheet saved twice, once blank and once for this year's data. The first thing you need to do is fill in some data here. I'm going to click lookups. And that's going to take me to this lookups page. You need to enter your book titles exactly as they are listed in KDP, where you're selling your eBooks, paperbacks, maybe um, Kindle Unlimited if you do that. It has to be exactly like that. I'm going to fill these in and come back when I'm done. Okay, those are my three books. This spreadsheet will work for up to 15 different titles, 15 different books, and you can have those books in different formats, such as paperback and ebook and audiobook, but it will work for 15 different titles. If you have ebook, I'm sorry, audiobooks through ACX, you also need to put in here the book product IDs because they use different book titles. If you're in a series, they're going to include the series name and the book title. So for our ACX purposes, we're going to track the books through book product IDs. Let me show you where you find those. In an ACX spreadsheet of sales, which you can download from their website, I'll show you how to do that in a little while, you're going to click on the sales details page. Let me make this bigger. Okay, sales details page. I can see facing the sun here. And here's the product ID here to the left. I'm going to copy that up here. So I copied it. I'm coming over here and I'm just going to paste it in. I use uh, command C and command V on my Mac to copy and paste. I'm going to copy and paste the rest of these in and I'll be right back. All right, I've filled in all of my book titles and my ACX audiobook book product IDs. Next, I'm going to enter the average cost of one wholesale paperback copy. These are for the wholesale copies that I am purchasing to sell on my website and at in-person signings. To calculate this average cost, I do include the shipping that I have to pay to Ingram Spark, or you may you may purchase through KDP Print. That's fine too, but um, you, you want to include the shipping price here. Let me show you how I track this average wholesale cost. I use a website called Stockpile Canvas. K, uh, excuse me, C A N V U S. Stockpile Canvas. It's a totally free website for tracking inventory, and so I'm going to click on here, and I see that facing the sun has an average cost of $7.20. Every time I buy books, I go in here and I put how much I paid and it keeps track of, um, of what my average cost for those books are. The averages can go up and down based on how much I pay for shipping, how many copies I'm buying, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the average cost of all three of my books and I'll be right back. Okay, I've filled in the average cost of one wholesale paperback copy of each of my books. By the way, this is all going to take a few minutes for you to set up, but the cool thing is you can do a lot of copying and pasting when you're setting up your, um, your spreadsheet for next year, and so you don't have to retype all this every time. Next, if you're selling in person or on your website, you really should probably work with your state to pay sales tax on whatever transactions you're required to pay sales tax on. It's probably just the transactions within your state of people who live in your state. My sales tax is 8.25%, so I'm going to put that percentage here as a decimal, 0 0.00825. This is a list of a whole bunch of paperback prices. You'll see these come into play later. 
a list of months. We have here a list of various per page rates that I'm paid through KENP. Um, I forgot what that stands for, but it's, um, it's the rates for Kindle Unlimited and Kindle Owners Lending Library books. Because I'm exclusive with Amazon, my book is in Kindle Unlimited and the Kindle Owners Lending Library. And every time somebody buys one of my books, I get paid a certain amount per page. But that amount changes from one country to another. And of course, the currencies change from one country to another. So um, you can look. There's a cool website called Written Word Media. If you Google Written Word Media KDP payout, they update that every month with the most recent KDP per page payout in the United States because that payout per page actually changes every month. So you probably want to keep track of that data as you go. So at the end of January, when Written Word Media puts out what the KDP payout is for January per page, you can update this and just keep this, this part of your spreadsheet updated every month. Now for all the other countries, I just looked at some past numbers and kind of put some general, it's probably going to be around these numbers for all these countries. I'm not going to update these every month. That would take way too long. I'm just going to keep these as estimates. In fact, you can keep the U.S. numbers as estimates too. Just know that they do go up and down every month. But um, I'm going to keep all the rest of these as estimates all year long. I might one time in the year look and update them. But um, And to do that, you can actually go to KBoards, which is um, a Kindle uh, forum, and you can search for KU rate, and that'll sometimes you'll be able to find those international rates through KBoards. I also have on here currency converters. Um, you might want to change these, like update them about once a year. Just know that this number is going to stay the same throughout your spreadsheet all through the year. So if you update it a whole bunch of times every year, it's going to update your entire numbers for all the year, the entire year in your spreadsheet. So I know that currency conversion numbers change throughout the year, but I'm okay with using estimates there. So to update these, you would just do a search for GBP, that's Great British Pounds, GBP to USD. And Google will tell you immediately that that, at the time I looked it up, one Great British Pound is worth 1.27 US dollars. And I just did that for all of these different currencies. And um, and I, I so this is what it was at the end of December. And again, I'll probably change that at some point. I'll look it up maybe next December to to get some uh, some more accurate or, or more updated numbers. All right, that's the lookup spreadsheet. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to worry about any of this stuff, it's okay to use the estimates. Just know that some of that is going to change from year to year, all the stuff on the right side of the spreadsheet. Okay, you've done your lookups page, you've done your heavy lifting to get your spreadsheet set up, and now we get to actually track our sales for different areas that we sell in. Let me click the menu button. That takes me back to this menu. Let me show you how I track website sales. I use WooCommerce with my WordPress blog. WooCommerce is awesome because it's free. Uh, it's a free storefront for your blog. It's a, a plugin for, for WordPress. The problem is if I want to download a spreadsheet of my WooCommerce sales, I can't do that for free. I'd have to pay them something like $75 a year. So every time I get a website sale, I just enter it manually. It's kind of a pain, but I do. I enter it manually into my sales spreadsheet. So let's say that I got a sale on October 16th. It was not a taxable sale. Uh, let's say it was a taxable sale. It was somebody here uh, in Texas, and it was for the book Facing the Sun. Let's say that the person on my website who bought Facing the Sun spent $12.99 per copy. And for some reason, they ordered three copies. Cool thing is, this will fill that in for me, $38.97. And again, all I'm doing is I'm going to my Woo Commerce uh, section of my WordPress dashboard and I'm just g gathering all this information for each sale. If they paid shipping, I have to put that in here, I'm gonna put $6 shipping. They did pay tax and I would actually look at Woo Commerce and manually fill in the tax. Let's say $3.80 in tax, okay? And I would just be pulling these numbers again directly from WooCommerce, so I wouldn't have to do any calculations. I would just be pulling it from there. And then every time a sale comes in, I fill it in on this website. If I if they buy more than one book, I can choose the second book that they bought here and fill in that information, up to five different titles per line. So um, I would track all of my website sales here. 
Again, this is kind of one of the most labor intensive parts, but um, I just don't have a better way to do it at this point. Click menu, in-person sales. This is gonna be generally like every once in a while. Let's say I do a book signing on November 20th. I would usually be pulling these numbers from Square because I'm doing, and from whatever I've written down if I got any cash sales. So these are generally gonna be taxable. I might say, okay, so I sold five copies of Facing the Sun. Oops, $12.99 for each copy. Five copies of Facing the Sun. And see, the reason we had that list of possible paperback prices on the lookup sheet was so that you would have a drop down here, okay? Same with your book titles. All of these are automatically filling in from the lookups that, that you filled in earlier in the, uh, on the spreadsheet. Five copies of that, and then I would say, okay, and I also sold, let's say, for $14.99 each, three copies of Facing the Gray. And then I would fill in just anything that I sold during this event. And if I had different prices, because I have like a bundle deal, I would enter that on a different line so that I could have the prices accurate. Now, the cool thing here is it's actually gonna, it's actually gonna um, calculate my tax for me on this particular sheet. Um, by the way, this is based on tax being paid on shipping and the cost of the books, but in-person sales don't usually have shipping, so you probably don't have to worry about that. But in Texas, I do have to pay tax on shipping if it's a Texas customer. All right, and then over here, I didn't show you this on the previous one, but it's going to add all this stuff up for you so you can look according to each month how much is selling and what your actual profit is. And this is where that average cost of each paperback that we put in, that's where this is filling in so that you can see what profit you're making on those in-person and website sales. If I had more than three books, up to 15 books, those names would be filled in automatically in these places, which would be pretty awesome. And um, uh, yeah, those names would be filled in there for me. All right, so that's all filled in. Remember to save frequently. That's how I do website sales and in-person sales. Now the rest of our sales, it's pretty cool the way that these work. You're just gonna pull some, um, some reports from websites like KDP and you're gonna paste data in and then this spreadsheet is gonna do all of the calculations for you. Let me show you how it works. We're gonna go to data entry. I'm gonna go to audiobook data and let me show you how we get our audiobook data. I would go to ACX for that there's my dashboard. We don't want the sales dashboard. We want the earnings report right next to it. Click earnings report. You are looking for, we're going to do the November report. You're looking for the royalty report and um, not the summary report. If all you see is a summary report, come back and check later. Um, these reports don't show up until the end of the month following your sales. And unfortunately, you can't uh, you can't get a report for ACX until they release it here. You don't know how much you're making on ACX, like in real time. You don't know it until they release it here. So right now I'm recording this at the beginning of January. I won't have December's reports until the end of January. So you need the royalty report in the CSV version. You would click on that. It would download. I've already downloaded that, so let me show you what it looks like. On the ACX spreadsheet, it starts out on the summary page. We don't want that. We want the sales details page. And what you're going to do, you never want to copy and paste these gray areas. You're only want to, going to want to copy and paste these white areas. So I'm going to copy this first white line for facing the sun. I'm highlighting it. Command C. I'm going over here to my spreadsheet. I'm going to click November because these are November's numbers. I would just click right under where it says November. In fact, you don't even have to highlight the whole thing. Just click that one cell. And you would paste that in. Okay, next I'm gonna do this next part here. Command C, click here, paste that in. And right beneath it, we're gonna do this last line and you're gonna have these one for every single title that you have on ACX. Command C, paste that in. Okay, I've pasted in all of my data from um, ACX for November. 
And let me show you what happens. I'm going to click this where it says click to go back to the beginning of worksheet. I'm going to click menu again. And I'm going to click sales details by category audiobooks. Now look at this. It's added up exactly what sales I had for each country, how much I made. And if I had other countries besides UK and US, let's say I had a sale in Canada and I had a sale in Australia and I had a sale in Japan or whatever. I don't even know what all, I don't remember what all countries they use, but those would all add up automatically through the spreadsheet on this other column. And it would keep track of how many sales I'd had in each of these places. Pretty cool, right? All right, so we have entered our audiobook sales. Let's click menu. Okay, we want to go to data entry for ebook and paperback data. There we go. Data entry, ebook and paperback data. All right, I'm going to click on November. And it brings me to November. Let me scroll over here. We're going to go to your KDP dashboard, the place where you always check your sales. We're on the bookshelf right now. I'm going to click reports. And we're going to go in here on the dates, go back to November, November 1 through 30th, apply, go all the way down and click generate report. All right, it downloaded it for me. Now I've actually already downloaded it earlier. I've got it right here. I named it KDP. The first thing we're going to track here is our combined sales. This is our, um, this is our ebook sales and our paper books, paperback sales. So I'm going to click. We're not going to worry about these this these headers at the top. I'm going to click the top left cell that actually has data in it. I'm going to scroll all the way down and to the right. I'm going to hold down the shift key to highlight all of this data. So I'm clicking the top left and the bottom right cells. Hold down the shift key and I'm going to copy it. Command C. You can also always go up to edit and click copy, okay? And do copy and paste from the edit menu. Command C. Going back over here to my ebook paperback data tab, click right under November and paste that data in. All right, let me let me show you this. It's really really cool. Click to go back to beginning of spreadsheet menu. Let me show you what just happened. Ebook sales. It's filled in for me all of my ebook sales, other UK, US. It's also done the currency calculations for me. So it has converted pounds to, um, to dollars. It's converted any other currencies that I sold books in to dollars. In fact, I think I'd sold one in like Australia in November or, or something. And so it converted those Australian dollars to dollars. Isn't that awesome? So the next thing that pasting in that data did for us is it's tracking our paperbacks. I'm gonna click KDP paperbacks. Unfortunately, KDP has not been reporting my paperback sales for me. I don't have that many paperback sales through KDP, but I have had some. They've only reported a couple of them. They've been using some outside printers who are really slow to report. So FYI, if you're not seeing paperback sales, that might be why. Took me a while to get to the bottom of it. But if I did have any paperback sales showing up on my spreadsheet for November, they would show up here as well. Click menu. Next, we're going to go back to this KDP report that we downloaded. And we're going to click KENP read or read here at the bottom and click that tab. These are all of our KU and Kindle owners lending library pages that were read in all different countries. The cool thing is all I've got right now is Amazon.com and Amazon UK. But if I had other countries, it would be using all those figures that we that we put on the lookups tab for the average or the approximate page read or uh, uh, amount that they're paying per page read in these different countries, it would be using those numbers. The, my spreadsheet would use those numbers and it would also um, do the currency calculations, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna, but I copied all, or I, I highlighted all of these. I'm gonna copy them, Command C. I'm gonna go over here to where it says KENP data. Click that. All right, we're gonna click November. And I'm going to paste that data in. All right, click to go back to beginning of worksheet, menu. 
Let's check this out. I click KENP pages and look at that. It has filled them all in for me and done all of those calculations for me on um, currency conversions and everything. And I can look at how much I actually earned. This is um, year to date, although of course right now it's only one month because that's all that we've entered. But this would be the year to date up here and it's gonna be broken down for month, by month and by book down here. Pretty cool. Menu. The last thing we need to enter is if you have Ingram Spark paperbacks. Here's the thing, I don't really like Ingram Sparks reporting, uh, or I, I, I like what they email to me. I don't like their, um, their online report downloading. I'm gonna show you how to do it in case you ever wanna do it. But what I'm going to suggest to you is that anytime you want to track your Ingram sales, you wait until It'll be like the beginning of the following month. They will email you the spreadsheet that you need for all of those sales. Wait until they email you the spreadsheet because the thing with Ingram Spark is that they have a different spreadsheet for every country that they're reporting for. And so if you have to download all those, it's just a pain. At least if you, if you have to actually go through and do the reports, at least if they're emailing them to you, they've already pulled the report for you. But if you're impatient and you want to pull the report now, or you don't have emails from previous months of what they sent you and you need to pull past reports, totally get it. So click reports on your dashboard and you're going to click print sales report. Let's say I want to pull a report for November. I would click period November. 2018. I'm not sure if this works until they've actually um, released those reports. You can also also put just date ranges up here. You can tell whether or not they've released a report by clicking period. Do you see where I did that period? And you can scroll down and see which reports they've released. So uh, December they've released, but January they haven't when I'm recording this. Okay, and then you're gonna have to do one country at a time. So let's say we want to pull U.S. sales for November. They don't let you do more than one country at a time. US dollar, at least I don't think they do. And then for US, you can keep this global connect uh, checked and print on demand. But if we were doing like UK and Great British pounds, pound sterling, then we would uncheck global connect. All right. And you would say email delivery tab delimited, you'd enter your email address twice and you'd click submit, submit, and they would email you that report. Like I said, much easier if you wait until they just email it to you. So I'm going to close this KDP and open an Ingram report that I've already saved in the past. Pulling it up. It's going to always give you this little weird thing. This file could be corrupted. Just go ahead and open it. Click yes. Ingram provides a lot of information, most of which you don't need. <laughs> Here's what you're gonna do. Again, we don't worry about this header. We just start with the data. We're gonna do exactly what we did before. Just copy the data, I went too far. Shift, click to select it, Command C to copy it. I'm gonna scroll over here and click Ingram Spark Data. I think this was November, it's just a Dummy page anyways, right? Oh, look, I already put it in there. I forgot to take all these out. So you can see where I um, where I already pasted that in there. But normally we would just click here and we would paste that data in. Um, if you have multiple spreadsheets for that month from multiple countries, you're just gonna paste in the data one below another, below another, and you're gonna paste in that data as far down as you need to so that you'll have lots of lines. Ingram Spark also reports in the currency of that country. Don't worry, this spreadsheet will convert that all to dollars for you. Click to go back to the beginning of spreadsheet. We're going to go to our menu and we're going to go to sales details, Ingram Spark paperbacks. And look at that. It has told me that I sold this many copies of Facing the Gray through Ingram Spark, this many through Facing the Fire in November. And it's added that all up for me and it'll break it down by country if I have multiple countries. Now, um, uh, one thing I forgot to tell you is I, I don't even know how many different currencies they report in. This is only set up to do UK, US, and Australia. So if you get other spreadsheets from other countries, 
I'm really sorry, but this spreadsheet is not set up to do those conversions. Like I said, I don't even know how many they report in or what. Uh, I just don't know how, how quite they do that. And so um, you can only track your Australia, UK, and US sales through Ingram Spark um, on this spreadsheet. Rather, you, you can't track other countries. All right. So we have put in all of our data for one month's worth of sales. Um, I know it looks like it takes a little while, but think about it. Most of this you're just doing once a month. Um, your website and in person, I would suggest you keep up with those. If you have website sales come in, put them in here pretty often um, so you don't get behind. In-person sales, like I did a signing today and sold a few books, I need to go into my spreadsheet and enter those before I forget to. But most of it you're just doing once a month. Always keep in mind your audiobook sales will lag behind on your reporting by about a month because ACX doesn't release that information. They don't actually release your royalties to you until they're ready to pay you. They pay fast. They pay like 30 days after the end of the month, but um, they also don't re release the numbers until then. Okay. So we've entered all those. Now let me show you what beautiful things this spreadsheet does. Click running totals. This is the running totals sheet where the magic happens. This is where we've got running totals of what's happening for the entire year for all of our books. You've got monthly totals up here at the top right, book by book totals, and this is all um, this is all the running totals for the year. And then we've got monthly data. So let's click on November. This tells us what's happening in all of the different areas of our sales for each of our books individually just in November. But you've got a page where you've got all of the months on one page and it just gives you lots and lots of data. By the way, if you don't like this extra white space, just highlight these rows that you're not using, right click and click hide, and that'll help clean up your spreadsheet. You'd have to do it on every month, but if you wanna clean up your spreadsheet, you can do that. We're gonna to click to return to the top of the page. Our last bit that I wanna show you is charts. If you like things that are visual, you're gonna love this page. A lot of the data that I just showed you on that other page is here in chart form. So if, if I wanted to look and see that um, with the, the limited data that we've got entered on this spreadsheet, I can look and say, wow, look, 40% of my income that I entered was audiobooks. 28% uh, was ebook sales. Um, and then um, I can look month by month since I've only got <coughs> November and a little bit of October on here. It, this is not much data, but once you've got more months, this will this will give you some good data. And then we've got um, by books, so I can see which books are making the most money, which books um, the in terms of quantity, which ones are selling the most. Um, lots and lots of visual data here. Sometimes these take a minute to load. Okay, we've got a few more things I want to show you on this um, on this spreadsheet. By the way, you can always get to this instructional video by clicking here. Right now it's not an active link because I haven't put the video on YouTube yet, but it will be an active link when you get this web, this spreadsheet. Down here we've got some miscellaneous things. If you're ever donating books to, to maybe a silent auction, you would click donations and you could enter what books you were donating. So I might say silent auction and the date, I would enter what book it was the quantity, and it's just going to keep track of how many I've donated. It's just for your records because you need to know that. Menu. Sales tax details. If you're, say, if you're paying sales taxes, this is going to keep track of all those physical copies that you have sold. And um, I only pay sales taxes once a year. If you pay more often than that, you're going to have to do some calculations. But if you pay once a year, this will keep nice track of that for you. Giving, let's say you wanna give a certain percentage of your income to charity or to a church or something. You would click giving, you would enter the giving percentage, whatever percentage you want to give of your royalties. And, um, and then this is gonna keep track for you of your running total of royalties. Um, it's not filled in right now because I need to do some tweaking on some formulas, but normally it would have your running total of royalties. When you give somewhere to a church or an organization, you put the date, amount given, the organization, and it would keep track of how much you've given and how close you are to your 10% goal or whatever your goal is. Menu. And we've got here promo stats. If you're ever selling um, or if you're ever doing a, a free promo or 
in fact, that's, that's all I use this for is if I'm doing a free ebook promo through Amazon, because they let me do that since I'm in KU, I use the Amazon um, spreadsheet, the same report that I showed you before, but I manually fill in how many free sales I had. So I add all those up from the spreadsheet. I then put in how many paid sales I had that day and how much I made, how many audiobook sales and how much I made, how many page reads and approximately how much I made. You can estimate here. And then any paid promos that I did, I put the amount, the dollar amount, the dollar amount I put spent on Facebook ads, AMS ads in US and UK. And then it's gonna tell me an estimated profit on that day or those days of that promo. So if I, um, if I spent $20 on promos here, but I had actual sales and royalties, um, of other books or of audiobooks of the book that I have for free. If I had those sales and royalties that were $25, then I figure, wow, that was a pretty successful promo because after the promo, I'm probably gonna continue to have some elevated sales for a while. So um, it's just a way for me to see if that free promo was actually worth it or not. I track those on here. All right, y'all, Those that's how this spreadsheet works. And I hope it's just as useful for you as it is for me to see all that information in one place. Thanks for watching.